Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an aeroponic plant cloner using a five gallon bucket. It's super simple and I'll show you every step of the way how to make it work and you'll be able to just clone as many plants as you like and it can cut down on your overall garden expenses by reducing the number of plants you have to buy when you can just buy one and clone it in, indefinitely. So guys, the first thing we're going to need to do is to get our net cup collars and we're going to put them around the bucket and space them evenly. And we'll need to mark these very carefully so we'll know exactly where our holes need to go. And so you want to make sure you don't cut too close to the outer edge because you need to have enough room for the plants to be able to expand. And you don't want to cut too close to the edge of the bucket, which could damage the outer edge. All right, I'm going to pick one of these up and just hit right where the center of the neck collar is going to go so I'll know exactly where to drill. Now these net cups are about, about two inches each, and I'm going to start the drill. You're going to want to do your drill in reverse so you can avoid damaging the plastic of the bucket. Now, I'm not sure if it was apparent as to how I was doing this drilling, but to start the drill, I would get the pilot hole in the normal clockwise motion. Once it got down to the where the hole saw was meeting your lid, then you want to reverse it. That way you get a lot cleaner cuts and you don't do damage to the bucket top. So it just comes out a lot cleaner. So i got one more hole to drill here in the center. This is where our plug is going to go in. It's going to be still using a net collar to prevent any water from getting out but these are going to be our plants that we're going to clone these are going to be the spots we're going to, we're going to clone them with our collar sleeves net collar sleeves so net net cup collar sleeves if i can get that out but anyways that is what we're going to do i'm going to clean this up and there's quite a mess here so i'm going to do that and then we'll drill our last hole now you can clean the holes up with a fine sandpaper block just by twisting it in each one and that'll reduce any of the debris that might still be attached and so this is a very fine grit sandpaper and we're just going to do that around each one and then we're going to dump our debris into our trash can and move on to the next step now one thing i didn't mention about this bucket it's sold by a sandwich chain here in america by the name of firehouse subs and these buckets are only three dollars a piece they are used to transport pickles to each franchise and the great thing about this bucket, it's got a gasket around the edges of it. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but there's a gasket that runs all the way around the lid. As long as you have your net cup gaskets safely inserted in there, you should have no problem with leakage. And you're going to use a net cup seal also on the center one, and that's where your plug's going to go in. So you're going to have these as your plants, and this is your power source. Your pump will be directly below, and I'm going to show you a few different ways you can set up your sprinkler head inside of the bucket. Now, guys, you want to make sure that the pump you use has enough force to push the water out through the sprinkler heads. There's several different ways we can do this. We can use a pop-up sprinkler head that sprays in a 360 fashion. We can use a sprinkler head like this, and I have tested all of these before, and they all work with the right pump. This one will slowly work in a 360 pattern, so that way all of your plant roots get an equal amount of water and it also allows a little bit more oxygen between the cycle of turning back and forth which only takes a minute or two now guys on this particular pump and i really like this pump, pump because it does have a quite a bit of force to it but it has a female receptacle for a half inch piece of pvc so we're going to take our half inch threaded pvc to slip side we're also going to have a shortcut piece of PVC that I've already jammed in here so I can't get it out, but it's only about an inch long. We're going to slip that onto that. We're going to have the same half inch to male threads, and then that way we can directly attach our sprinkler head, and I'll show you exactly how that works. I'm going to fill the bucket up to about halfway and demonstrate how this type of sprinkler head will carefully water each set of roots as it circles around the pot in a 360 back and forth fashion. I'm going to set that up and I'll demonstrate it right now. Okay guys, so this is basically the setup here and it's almost to the top of the bucket. You don't want it far down in the bucket because you want it close to where your roots are going to be growing. 
So I'm going to plug this in and demonstrate really quickly how this will oscillate throughout the entire bucket and slowly water each plant. I'm going to plug this in and let you just see it run just for a second here. Now you have to remember that with the top on you won't have any leakage, especially with our sealed gasket top. But if you look through the holes you can see the oscillating sprinkler head working its way around the bucket and there's a little bit of spray out which is fine because each one of these will have our net cup collar in there and also we've got a little leakage right here where our power lines coming in but that's going to eventually go into the center one so this just shows you how it's within probably a half inch to an inch from the where your neoprene collar is going to sit so i'm hoping this is clear inside the video that it just works its way around in a 360 pattern these two particular sprinkler sprinkler heads i've had for many years i've trans them to the garden if I'm going from micro irrigation from this type to micro irrigation so I have a lot of these just sitting out in the shop but that's an easy way to make sure every plant in there gets watered and it's probably one of the simplest ways to set up this type of bucket so guys you have a lot of different types of sprinkler heads to choose from this is a 360 sure pop and it just has a little small riser on it that will pop up and spray out in all directions but you have to make sure your pump is going to be strong enough to do that or you will have to make sure that you take something and wedge it in there like a small piece of metal so that the, it's not required to push this up it takes a lot of force to push one of these up so you can easily wedge something like a small nail in there to keep it fully open like that and then that way it doesn't have to have a lot of water pressure to push up now this one is just a simple screw on type and it will spray water all around the head there. I'm going to show you the one that I think is really interesting and I'm going to have to put it together but it works really great and it's a little bit finer of a mist. Now guys this is my favorite setup right here. These red sprayers right here put out a very nice mist and you can put this just above the water level and it will just put a fine mist on all your root system. 360 de degree coverage so I think this actually works better than the pop-up sprayer or the oscillating sprayer but if you want the simplicity of those two it's just basically screw it on and go with it this is going to require a little bit more technical ability but it's not hard and i'll list all the parts down below but i've yet to drill these two holes so i'm going to bring it in closer to show you exactly what i'm doing to install this and create a threaded hole for these sprayers now guys this is a tap and drill set that you can purchase and it's very inexpensive but this is going to drill your hole in the PVC and this is going to create the threaded insert so you can thread your sprayer into that hole and it won't just pop out. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to make a threaded hole here with the PVC. And I just got to, got to try not to talk over the drill while it's going so it won't drown my voice out. Now we're going to put a hole right here, right below our end cap. Make sure as you're drilling, you're drilling the drill stays perfectly straight up and down. We're going to now do the second hole. Remember, you also don't want to get too close to this end because this is going to be sliding into your cross piece. So we just want to come maybe right there, maybe about a little bit more than half an inch. Now next, we're going to put in our tap that will create the threads. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Now remember, when you go in here, you want the drill to do the work. Don't try to force it and don't try to pull it out. Just let the drill go in by itself and come back out by itself by putting it in reverse. Okay, now let's put in a couple of sprayers. We're just going to test it real quick to make sure they're... And these sprayers come in like 360 spray, half spray, quarter spray. So just remember, you can use whichever one you want, but I want to do a complete 360. Now we're going to just twist this on. I'm hoping the camera's seeing that right there. 
we're just going to make sure it threads it all the way down. If it doesn't, we can go back in. I think this is going to need another, another go with the threads there. Okay, let's try that again. Give a little bit of force there until the threads catch. And there it goes. Now we're flush with the PVC. It will not come out easily. You'd have to remove it with a set of pliers or unscrew it. Okay, let's put the second one in. There's a set of threads I can see. I want to make sure it's going to fit properly. And for some reason, it always takes two on these. So let me put another set of threads there. All right, we'll clean this up later because we don't want a lot of this debris going into our pump. So there you have it. These will spray in a 360 pattern. We have two on each one. There's four arms, so we'll have eight sprayer, spray heads inside the bucket. All right, we're going to install our last arm. Now, there's a cross piece here that's a single piece of PVC, and it also has a down, downward slip. So you're coming straight up and you're dividing it by four. And so that is really great coverage for our PVC. It's going to cover the whole interior of the bucket. The cap will be on so we don't have to worry about leakage. But this is my favorite setup of this particular way of doing a hydroponic bucket, a cloning bucket. Okay, guys, let's take this out to the uh, garden. And that way I won't make a huge mess in the greenhouse because I'm not going to put the lid on. I want you to be able to see the effect and effectiveness of the spray as it's spraying inside the bucket. Okay, guys, we've got our bucket about half filled. And also, I didn't mention this before, you can adjust the pressure to completely off to full force. So I've got it on full force on our pump. We're going to put that right in the center. I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to stop talking because the spray may drown me out. But I just want to demonstrate how this works inside the bucket. Okay, guys, I've got the lid on. I've got it tightly sealed. I've got our power cord coming out of the center hole. Now, you'll still see water is still going to be hitting each possible root system. But I'm going to plug it in one more time and let you see that. Okay, guys, so the last thing we're doing is we're installing our neoprene collars. The first one is going to go around our power cord. We're going to put it right in the hole. It's a very snug fit. And we're just going to go to each one, putting it in there. And there's seven total plant stations and one power cord exit. And so this is a super simple way to clone plants, start a root system. You don't need a net cup. These, these are very tight in there, so you don't have to worry about the plant. Even if it gets larger, it's not going to fall through. So there we go. We have seven plant cloning stations, one power cord, and no possibility of leakage since this was a bucket that held a liquid and even if it turned over on its side it's very well sealed so you don't have to worry about spillage okay we're going to do one more test just to show you how there is no leakage leakage now there is a lot of mist from the outdoor spray but we're going to put it on the floor let it run for a minute and just show you how no water is getting out it's completely contained in the system and it will not evaporate it will all only be used by your plant all right let's give it one last plug in and we're going to see if there's any possible leakage now the system doesn't make a lot of noise, but I can hear the water running. No water coming out through the top. And the great thing is you can put a tiny, tiny hole in the side if you did have some problem with the neoprene collars. Some people have suggested using pool noodles. Those are okay, but I think you might get a little bit more leakage with that. The other question people might ask me is, do you run this 24 hours a day? No, I'm probably gonna put this on a 30 minute on timer and 30 minute off timer. So it's just on and off and it'll run about 12 hours a day. 30 on, 30 off. So guys, this is a super simple way to clone plants. It's easy to set up. It doesn't cost a lot. You could probably do this entire system with a $3 bucket, a $20 pump, the neoprene gaskets just for a few dollars. You could probably set the whole thing up for less than $30. So just remember, this is a great way to clone plants. I'm going to start doing this with all my plants with multiple buckets. You can buy a professional cloning system, but it's going to be a lot more expensive. It's currently running. I don't know if you can hear it. It does make just a little bit of noise, but it could be in a part of your house under a grow light and you would barely notice it being there. So guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll try this system because it is really a perfect way to save a lot of money on plants. You can 
set this up, have multiple buckets running, and you can literally just fill your garden with plants from one plant by cloning it. And it's just a great way to do it. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate each and every subscriber. If you have a comment or if I left something out, please leave it down below. I hope you'll like and subscribe. So have a great day, guys.